One. Two. Six. One. Two. Three.
13. I didn't go as far as saying it's a horrible film, but I didn't expect it to flop nearly as hard as it currently is. This is pathetic, the numbers it's putting up in the box office right now. This is the concord of movies. The studio stands for movies roughly $150 million based on the estimates right now for the direction she's being followed. It is disastrous. I thought no matter how terrible this film was, it would still be well in the box office because it had such a large fan base that I thought we'd go see it no matter what, we'd be the chance. Nope, that wasn't the case at all. If you needed to escape from the 40s and leave the place to lay low, buy a ticket to the closer to you, no one would ever check that auditorium. No one is saying those theaters are more empty than the rooms for the boys to be all alone in the boys. It's Although I make that reference to Scooby a lot, that's Six. something that's always in my mind. It's probably still one of my favorite scenes in the fun spot. cinema scores is actually really like one of the few times I've heard of it, so I'm not the most familiar with it, but it's been around for a while and it is a consistent score that pulls moviegoers after seeing a movie just to kind of gauge reactions and then they uh, assign a grade to it. And prior to uh, Joker 2, the record holder for the lowest cinema score for a comic book movie was Fantastic Four from 2015, which had a C-. That movie is still to date one of the most hated comic book movies of all time. 
and now Joker's view is below that. That's mind-boggling. And they also put in another perspective here, Borderlands, which I believe is the worst movie of this year, by far, I think it is significantly worse than Joker 2, actually has a D-plus, meaning that it has a higher score than Joker 2. And Madam Web, which I believe is one of the worst comic book movies of all time, has a C-plus, so significantly higher than Joker 2. Initially, I just assumed that all cinema scores were like skew on the very low side of things, because when people go see a movie that's bad, like a Madam Black or a or like a Joker 2, their initial reaction is obviously going to be angry, like, I wasted money on this, it's absolute dog shit, thus the cinema scores is always too low. But when I saw Madam Black had a C plus, I was placed in a vulture point, like kind of getting bullet points on how this catastrophe came into existence. So, I do know some of these, but some of them are brand new information, so apparently the idea came to Rocky Beach and it's one. There's multiple sources that corroborate that little nugget of lunacy. It turns out that it was Phoenix who came up with the idea that he was going to come to him in a dream and he and Phoenix brought this idea to former Warner Bros. chairman, Tony Edwards. After one insider was asked who the movie was made for, it was two words. That's a pretty common cliche where if people are asked about something, how did it come to be? Some people in the fall just making up some pretentious nonsense like, it came to me in a dream. I doubt it. I really doubt that. But let's just assume in this case it's real. Like he's being a dream about Joker 2 being a musical. Just keep that a dream, buddy. Like, that's a stupid idea. That's not even something worthy of taking to anyone. That's embarrassing. And what's even more embarrassing is how up his own ass Todd Phillips is that he thought that that was a great decision, and he thought he knew better than everyone else, so he shunned the rest of the department to do his own thing, because he knew better. He had the billion dollars blocked, so he had to hit Joker. He can do no wrong. So he ran with this stupid idea that came with Phoenix in a dream. They also apparently tossed around another stupid idea about putting it on Broadway before making it into a film. So I guess admittedly it would have been better on Broadway than in a movie setting, because at least then they could try and make the musicals work and weave it more into the actual plot. But unfortunately we were cursed with this film. Todd Phillips had free reign with Warner Bros. wanting him to do his thing, and the film had no test screening. Because why would you test screen this? Todd Phillips knows what you like. Clearly, he's in your fucking wall. He is in your noodle, reading your mind. He's delivering that fire that you've been looking for with Joker sequel. Lady Gaga signed on before the script was finished. That one I don't think is that big of a deal. She is a talented actress, so, so she signed on because she was excited for the script, even though it wasn't done. I don't think it's that surprising or that big of an issue, but I do imagine she might have some regret with agreeing to do this before seeing the final script because this has become a joke. Next, the new DC box James Gunn had zero involvement. James notes that Todd Phillips didn't use them. Using toilet paper, I'm sure. I mean, why don't you try to give notes to Todd Phillips? Well, I mean, he's got, he has no blemishes on his resume. We know that. I mean, what well, could you possibly have notes on for Joker Foley to do? It's a fucking masterpiece, clearly. God, I don't know a whole lot about Todd Phillips other than his previous work, but his attitude for this movie is so yucky. It's so embarrassing just reading about him. The film had a budget of $200 million, which included a $20 million salary for Phoenix, $12 million for Lady Gaga. Not surprising, almost every blockbuster that comes out is in like the $100, $200 million plus ballpark. I imagine this film in the marketing budget alone adds an additional $200 million to that figure. Musical aspects were largely downplayed in marketing, with director Todd Phillips at first insisting it wasn't one. I don't remember Todd Phillips trying to shut that down or anything to put the kibosh on it. For as long as I can remember, the film, since its official announcement, had always had that knowledge revealed that there was a lot of musical elements to it. So I went in with the impression that this was going to be a musical. I imagine a lot of others do as well. But again, if you just watch the trailers, it doesn't really come across that way. So Todd Phillips made that tough decision to hide that fact because musicals, I mean, especially for fans of the first Joker movie, probably aren't going to be that interesting for this kind of audience. So I, I imagine that's probably accurate, but I don't recall Todd Phillips trying to downplay it. 
Christopher Nolan reported that Jake was one of the first movies that an immediate police suit joker started to smile. There was no existence of the sequel of Nolan leaving or a break. No one thought of this one. So, apparently, Todd Phillips had actually wanted in the first film to make two couple of miles into his face. Christopher Nolan apparently still was one of those at the time, so he had to say so via that you're a fucking idiot. No, you just shut that shit down real quick. But now that Nolan has left Warner Bros, Todd Phillips has left his own devices again and went hog wild, so as all of the show by now, the joke too ends with a completely random type of act in which Shanks uh, talking to the Joker in the hallway where the movie begins because nothing in his joke from the game and nothing actually matters in the movie. This random guy abruptly kills him and then in the background cuts a smile into his face. Just kind of time for him to make a little disrespect to Nolan here and the legacy that Nolan builds with that Joker. It's such an insulting thing to consume here because it's not well done. It comes out of nowhere and this whole film is garbage in the first place, so it's just an even bigger waste of time. I, I understand why Nolan would absolutely not want Phillips to do that. It's also just highly unnecessary and doesn't actually tie in anything. So it's super dumb, but since Nolan wasn't a Warner Bros. at the time, Todd Phillips unfortunately got to do it, and we're all worse off for it. This next one had me googling. Todd Phillips was secluded on a ranch during the opening weekend. I think he was bracing for the storm. I think he knew that this was not going to be received as well. Uh, like, it was already not being highly reviewed from the people that had already seen it. So I imagine he had the inkling that, man, maybe he missed the mark. Or it could be totally wrong. Perhaps it was Todd Phillips just under the impression that his high art speaks for itself. And he wants people to come up with their own conclusions based on the nothing burgers he served them. So he isolated himself from the rest of society to give us this chance. But more than likely, he just went to the ranch to just go ahead and tune everything out and count all the money Warner Bros. dumped on his fucking front porch for this absolutely trash sequel. Film was panned by fans and critics. It currently has a 33% from Rotten Tomatoes critics and a 31% audience score. It has the same score of the lowest ever for a comic book film. It domestically opened with 37.8 million, which is lower than comic book films like Morbius and Marvel. And it needs 450 million globally to break even. It may lose the studio over 150 million. And one of those is already in $40 billion in debt. And god damn it, they earned every penny of that debt. Warner Bros. keeps making the stupidest decisions. I'm always surprised to see what new batshit insane idea fucking Mass Lab comes up with. Every single scene he makes, he does the opposite of Tim Knight, where Tim Knight is taken to go. Mass Lab comes around with a cheese cut. She turns everything to actual cheese. And he is just, I don't know how he so Warner Bros. is deep in debt. This is not helping at all. And I just had to talk about it again. You know, Joker 2 is all about musicals and dancing, you know, I think you want to be. Okay, I'm not a brain with Joker 2. What a fucking bad thing. It earns the scene, man. The movie is bad, the decision making is bad with it, and Warner Bros. really needs to figure it out because it is getting embarrassing for that whole company. That's about it. Yeah. Principal Gamer's main goal is to gain access to your computer. And once they do, they can lock the mouse and keyboard, hide your screen, look at your bank account, your private files, even view through your webcam without you knowing. Essentially, they gain access not just to your computer, but your entire life. No matter how the scam starts, they're going to ask you to download some kind of remote connection to you, like both of you or anybody. Anybit.com. Anybit. Click on anybit.exe. Did you open anybit? Yeah. You can imagine if Google screen has excitement when a tool like this gets downloaded. Once it's set up, they can connect to a victim's computer at any time, even without them knowing. What will we'll use that against the scam is today? I'll download any desk and do everything the scammers ask. But what they don't know is that I'm not a victim, and I'm communicating directly with any desk. And any time they connect to my computer, their entire call center is going to be shut down. Which phone are you using right now? Is it an Android? Or is it an Android? 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 Is it an Android
sir. Right now, sir, first of all, I can tell you, you are talking with John Fox. I am a technician in my course, sir. Okay.